I am Kanagaraj, Faculty for Agriculture. I have been in this field for the last 15 years. I came to civil service preparation in 2008. I have gone to EPS entry for five times, three times for IAS and two times for Indian Forest Service, with the agriculture and botany optional. And for the last eight years, I have been taking agriculture optional. So you are my 20th batch. Right. <clears throat> so every year you connect two batches, one in July, another one in October. So, online students, uh, please confirm the audio quality. Is everything okay? okay. Right. So, online students, uh, if you have any doubts, you can uh, send your doubts to co host. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> So how many of your agri graduates? Okay, right, good. Any non-agri? Non-agri? Horticulture. Okay, no problem. Okay, agree. Allied subject. Okay. So, <clears throat> right. So uh, before uh, we we'll see the um, the agri optional uh, introduction. So I'll give some idea. So because many of you might have uh, your uh, First time, okay, we are coming for the first time, so for the preparation. So there are uh, uh, two kinds of optional number UPSC. There are more than 20 options okay, in the UPSC. But uh, only few options are very popular in our UPSC. Public administration, sociology, geography, right, <coughs> history, anthropology, political science. And recently, one more option is also getting popular, agriculture. Right. <coughs> so there are two kinds of optional, uh, humanities and uh, Technical uh, subject, pure science optionals. So the humanities optionals are mostly the sociology, public administration, anthropology. So they come under the humanities subjects. And our uh, science-based subject, pure science, physics, chemistry, botany, zoology, they come under the pure science. Agriculture is not a pure science. Agriculture is a applied science. Okay, agriculture, forestry, they are applied science. So we apply the concept of pure science in Agriculture. We study the botany. So we apply the concept of plant physiology, genetics, cell biology in agriculture. Right? <clears throat> so each optional has their okay, they, they have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages, merits and demerits. So if you take a humanity subject, um, so mostly uh, the subjects okay, the anthropology, sociology, geography. So the syllabus, okay, if you see the syllabus, here uh, we can uh, our own writing skill play a major role. So the evaluation is mostly subjective in nature. So the examiner, okay, you need to satisfy the examiner. And uh, so when you see the syllabus, uh, you have to relate to the current affairs for every topic. Okay. So whereas in the pure science optional, uh, just we can focus on the syllabus, you can uh, read the, the entire syllabus. The questions are 100 percent from syllabus only. So the current affairs questions are very, very rare in the uh, pure science optionals, right? But the main problem in the pure science optional, you need to study the, the entire syllabus. Every topic in the syllabus is important. Moreover, you need to make, it, make, make up a lot of facts, scientific names, and the theories in the pure science optional. Right? But the advantage is you can score very high marks in the pure science area. Whereas okay, in the humanity subject, you may be aware of various terms. Okay? Even if the question is, okay, you don't know exact answer, you can manage in the sociology, geography, because these studies you study in GS also. Right? Whereas in the pure science area, if you don't know the answer, you cannot answer. That's the problem. Okay? But otherwise, scoring is very easy in the pure science optionals because the evaluation is objective in nature. If they ask question regarding DNA, if you write the structure of DNA, the examiner cannot reduce mark on DNA because it's already proved. 
the theory is already proved it is already written right so if you okay if you write what is given in the book then it's okay you can able to give complete answer for any topic so in the pure science optional even okay we can score out of 10 marks in our upsc marking pattern so out of 10 marks mostly they give 5.5 or 6 for the best answer but in the pure science area if you give the correct answer technical answer we can able, even able to score more than 7 out of 10 it is possible right so but syllabus completion is it will take a little bit of extra time and compared to the humanities area okay right <clears throat> but nowadays uh, uh, one common pattern okay the trend in upsc optional papers they split the questions so earlier they asked a single question the single question for 30 marks for 50 marks or 60 marks so nowadays uh, the maximum mark okay, for the big question 20 marks question and the, even in the 20 mark question they ask two three questions in the single question the questions are split so they compile okay they try to ask all the the areas in a particular syllabus right so anyhow okay for any optional uh, so it's not okay there is no okay in the upsc uh, easy optional uh, difficult optional okay no such thing every option has okay own merits and demerits so for every option in upsc if you choose any optional you have to complete the syllabus so syllabus completion is must okay right <clears throat> So regarding our uh, agriculture optional in our EPSC, it's uh, recently it's getting popular and even uh, non-agri students also taking agri optional recently. Uh, but I'll tell you, okay, so who can choose agri optional? Uh, the students with the agriculture background, they can choose agriculture optional, no second thought, right? So no need to worry about agri optional. You can definitely, you can choose agri optional. Okay, this is the best optional for agri students. So most of the subjects we study in our college days, Again, okay, they, they are the part of the syllabus, the UPC syllabus. And syllabus is definite. Even, okay, you need to uh, go through all the syllabus again in the college days. Okay, many topics are not committed in the UPC syllabus. The syllabus is very limited for the UPC syllabus. So for agri-graduates, okay, this is the best optional. So along with the agriculture students, uh, the allied subjects, allied uh, subjects like uh, forestry, horticulture, they can also choose agriculture, no problem. And students with the biology background, So other areas, okay, BSc botany, because botany is very difficult for the UPSC, right? So uh, later, okay, I will tell you the suggestion. Uh, suppose, okay, if you are appearing for the Indian Forest Service, uh, one best combination is agri botany. So for the Forest Service, we can choose botany, but for the CSC, botany is very tough. Only the students with the botany background, and sometimes okay, MSc botany. So only those for okay, only for those students, it is highly uh, suitable, right? So even okay, students with the botany background, they can also choose the agriculture, right? So students with the biology background, BSc botany, BSc microbiology, uh, biotechnology, those students, okay, they can choose agri optional, highly suitable. Plus uh, the students with the uh, interest in biology, science, they should have studied uh, science in the plus one plus two, biomass group. Even if you are an engineering graduate, you can choose agri optional. If you have studied biology in your plus one plus two, the biomass group, okay. So we can easily understand agriculture because paper one is a little bit, okay, it's like a GS paper, but a paper two is full of technical and agriculture. So that's why we need this, okay, the biological knowledge is important for agriculture in the paper two, right? So and students, okay, any other, uh, apart from this uh, background, uh, if you have studied uh, biology in your plus one plus two, then you can think about some other optional. It's not suitable for you. Okay. So if you studied, okay, bio, biomass is very important in the plus one plus at least. Okay. So for agri students, okay, and the students with the biology background, they can choose. And students, uh, they have, okay, they have chosen, okay, the if they have studied uh, biology in their plus one plus two, that's okay. They can choose agri optional, right? And if you have zero knowledge in biology, then you can think about some other optional. It's not suitable. Okay. <clears throat> right. So why agriculture in our uh, UPSC? <clears throat> so recently, I told you it's getting popular and uh, the success rate is high when compared to even popular optionals. So we have to see the overall uh, uh, the proportion. See, uh, many students okay, they ask me, uh, sir, why in our uh, agriculture, uh, uh, the top ranking students are not coming from agriculture background? Okay, mostly the top ranked students are mostly from uh, sociology, public administration, geography. So you have to see the actual number of students appearing for the examination. You have to see the proportion. 
so from uh, other optionals from uh, sociology geography public administration or political science the number of candidates appearing for the examination is very high mains exam so every year the upsc choose okay they, they select approximately 10000 students appearing for the mains examination you know the, uh, the exam uh, the process right prelims mains and uh, interview right so in the prelims to mains stage approximately they choose uh, 10000 students for the mains out of this uh, 10000 candidates only around in the range of 100 to 200 students they appear with the agriculture optional for other popular optionals for sociology it is again the range of 3000 students okay they appear with the sociology optional similarly okay, geography also around 3000 students okay then for other optionals okay 2000 1500 2500 okay so this is the, the number of students appearing for the, okay, with the various optionals the popular optionals right so automatically when uh, so see the comparison so 100 students are appearing for the mains out of this every year approximately 10 students are clearing with the agriculture optional okay so in our uh, overall okay, throughout india out of this 10 students more than 5 students are my students every year in the entire south india almost uh, 90% of students clear with agriculture optional are my students for the last 8 years okay right so see the proportion out of 100 10 students are clearing in the final exam so the success rate is 10 percentage whereas the success rate for these optionals just okay five to in the range of five to six percentage this is the difference okay so in the coming years because of okay the recently it's been popular so in the coming years we can expect a higher percentage from agriculture so more number students get appear for the agriculture optional and we can expect a top rank in our upsc and this year also our last year 2023 result our student uh, cleared with the, the top rank okay 122nd rank sunil vinay patel okay he got a yes right <clears throat> okay so recently after the revision of gs syllabus one more uh, advantage choosing agriculture optional we have overlapping syllabus with the gs so in our gs paper 3 you know again okay, the mains exam there are four gs papers gs paper 1 2 3 and the gs paper 3 deals with the indian economy so as okay under the indian economy agriculture economy is also part of indian economy so every year there are four questions from agriculture agri issues okay so this okay the, the agri issues are covered in our syllabus itself in our upsc option syllabus itself so if you cover the option syllabus you can able to answer the four questions sometimes these questions are technical also in the gs also they are asking technical questions only agri students can able to answer okay, for the, for those questions right so overlapping syllabus of the gs even in the prelims also we can expect a four to five questions from the agri recently in the prelims also they are asking technical questions from agriculture so in our agri optional okay optional subject we need the knowledge of geography and environmental science all are interrelated agriculture environmental science and geography interrelated right so combinedly we can expect 15 questions in the gs prelims right so this is another advantage for agri optional and i just now i told you the syllabus is definite so questions are 100% questions will be from syllabus only we have limited syllabus many topics in our college days okay the college syllabus okay, they meet out many topics okay for example nematology so nematology we study in our college days but nematology is part of our upsc syllabus right there are uh, 11 subjects in the paper 1 and uh, 10 subjects in the paper 2 totally we study actually in our college days we study more than 50 subjects right but here there are only 20 subjects we study okay, we are going to study in the upsc syllabus and the questions are 100% only only from syllabus then uh, this is what i told you evaluation is objective in nature if you give the proper scientific fact theory and the proper explanation they won't reduce the mark we can able to score maximum marks okay out of 10 we can able to score maximum 7 8 marks out of 10 it's possible especially in the paper 2 because paper 1 is like gs paper general most of topics are general but paper 2 is a technical in the paper 2 we study about okay, we, uh, it deals with uh, cell biology genetics plant biotechnology plant breeding plant physiology 
So they, okay, these are major syllabus in the paper two, right? <clears throat> so we can score maximum marks in the paper two. Actually, our strategy in our uh, aggregate optional for any optional, our aim is to score the magical number three hundred. So, okay, for any optional student, they try to score more than three hundred. This is the extraordinary score, okay, very good score in uh, optional optional paper. So in our uh, agriculture optional, so this is split up. In the paper one, we can able to score 140. Actually, it looks easy. Okay, it seems easy, but scoring is difficult. Paper one. I will tell you later. Okay, it's the reason. And the paper two is a since a technical nature. If you prepare well, you can score even score more than 160, more than 170. Right? So we can able to score more than 300 in the agri optional. We can exploit more marks in the paper two. <clears throat> and one more advantage of choosing agri optional, we can also appear for the forest service, Indian forest service, with the agriculture and the botany optional. This is the best combination because uh, forest is not allowed. Actually, only four options are popular in uh, forest service, agriculture, forestry, botany, geology. So mostly the students with the engineering background, they go for the geology, forestry combination. And agri students, they go with the agri botany combination. These are the only the popular four options in the forest service. Okay, right. Because okay, they removed that uh, combination. Earlier there was combination, okay, agri forest combination was allowed earlier, but now they removed the agri forest combination. Right. So this is the best combination for moreover, actually, in the botany also many topics are common. Why botany is the best combination for agriculture? In the again in the paper two of botany, the syllabus are same. Many topics are common between agriculture and botany. Again, in the, in the paper two of botany, the syllabus are again cell biology, genetics, plant breeding, plant physiology. Again, okay, these are the syllabus in the paper two of botany. Right? But in the botany, they have covered elaborately. You have to cover elaborately. The syllabus is very vast in the botany. Right? So we can combine the agri and the botany syllabus in the paper two area. That's why okay, it's easy, okay, the best combination. Right? And one more advantage in our agri optional. Uh, for a, not only agri optional, for any science based optional, for botany, zoology, or a geology, okay, for any optional, uh, the repetition of questions is okay, very common. So, if you go through the last uh, 10 years question paper, uh, almost 60 70 percent questions get okay, repeated every time, every year. So, we can also okay, refer the, the previous year questions, PVQs. Okay, <clears throat> right. Right, so. <clears throat> So if you are convinced to choose agri optional, and uh, my suggestion um, for agri graduates, without any second thought, you can go with agri optional. It's the best uh, optional for you. So for the non-agri students with a uh, science background and uh, other allied subjects, botany, zoology, microbiology, any biology background, they can choose agri optional. We can they can easily understand uh, the paper two area. So I am telling specifically because paper two is technical. To understand the cell biology, uh, genetics, plant physiology, we need the the biology knowledge. Okay. And uh, for the engineering students, um, if you have studied uh, biology in their higher secondary, then they can choose. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, regarding our uh, optional course, so <clears throat> here, um, so just I told you the paper is a uh, technical. So I will explain all the concepts clearly in the paper two area, the cell biology, genetics, and plant breeding area. They are too technical. So I will explain all the concepts clearly. In the paper one also, some areas are technical, soil science, nutrient management, irrigation, those areas are technical. So I'll explain all the concepts clearly, and you'll get the best material for agriculture optional. Currently, our material, you might have heard about this agri optional material prepared by me. So this is the best material like throughout India. Um, students are purchasing this material for agri optional reference. Okay. So you will get this material along with our course. There are uh, six volumes totally. Um, paper one, three volume, paper two, three volume. This material covers comprehensive entire syllabus. Because in our agri optional, just I told you, there are 20 subjects you have to study. So for the 20 subjects, uh, we need to refer more than 10 books for agri optional. Okay. So I have covered the entire syllabus in a six book, totally 2000, 2000 pages, the material. So just six books that cover the entire syllabus. You can fully depend on one material for the entire agri optional. No need to refer any other books. 
It's a comprehensive material. Okay, you can save a lot of time by referring this material. Okay. <clears throat> Then uh, regularly, uh, we conduct, okay, during our uh, course, I will conduct uh, class tests regularly. So initially, for our uh, first one or two weeks, uh, we have an uh, answer rating program. It's a basic answer rating program. I will, uh, after every class, I will uh, provide uh, uh, the homework. So, okay, one or two questions, okay, for your practice. So after uh, answer rating practice, you have to send the answer to me. I will correct it and I will give feedback. And I will also discuss, okay, in the one or two class, okay, in the first initial classes, I will discuss the uh, how to write a perfect answer for the UPSC because the answer rating is different. The college, okay, our college answer rating is different from UPSC answer rating. So I will give you the idea how to approach our particular question and uh, what should be the perfect answer for UPSC in the first one or two classes, right? Then after that, we conduct a regular uh, class test. Probably every week, uh, you will be having a uh, class test. So in our uh, class, I will uh, go alternatively, paper one, paper two. So first I start with the paper one. Uh, cropping the basic areas, cropping system, cropping pattern, agronomy area. Okay, first I start with the agronomy area, and then uh, after completing the cropping pattern, cropping system area, uh, it will take three to four lectures to com complete those area. I move to paper two, genetics. Then after completion of genetics, again I will come to paper one. So I'll go alternatively. So after completion of every topic, I will conduct the class test, weekly ones. Okay, so classes are uh, for uh, not for kids, okay, not a full test, just uh, seventy marks. I will ask you five questions, three 10 marks and two 20 marks, okay, All right. <clears throat> then I will share, okay, in our Telegram channel, I will share the topos answer copies, the previous year uh, topos answer copies, my own uh, model answers. I prepared, okay, model answers, I own, okay, my model answers and uh, I will share strategies for, okay, actually we create a separate channel. Uh, before, I, I, I think I already created, right? <clears throat> I don't know how many have joined the channel, okay, right, yeah. So already we created a separate channel. So in the Telegram channel, uh, I will provide uh, regular updates regarding our class program, uh, model answers, topos answer copies, strategy, everything, okay, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> right. So recently, in our uh, agree optional, one uh, common uh, misconception okay, among the students, um, actually this advantage only, I, I just I told you that. This repetition of uh, PYQs. Uh, so one um, common issue in this uh, agri optional. So for the agri students, uh, they prepare on their own. They go for the self preparation because okay, we study in our college days. So they go for the self preparation. But uh, in the self-preparation, my suggestion is, uh, even if you're doing on your own, always uh, try to complete the syllabus, okay? Because many students, okay, what they're doing, this mistake, they prepare only based on the PYQ. I have seen that, okay, many students, uh, they take the last 10 years question paper, a 20 years question paper, it is available in the market, okay? So they compile this question based on the topic wise, and they prepare answer key only for the PYQ. So earlier, the repetition was very high. Nearly 70, 80% of the questions repeated in the every year. Okay, but now it's not a correct strategy. Because many students are doing this mistake. So in our uh, UPC, okay, in our optional syllabus, okay, why coaching is important? In every topic, actually, I will tell you the recent okay, trend and then I will explain why, uh, what you should do okay, during the preparation. See, the current uh, trend in the UPSC, again, okay, optional paper, not only agree optional, for any, any optional, the questions are split. Even, okay, in a single question, they ask three, four questions, sub-questions, okay. So, questions are split. And another uh, major problem, okay, in the, in the okay, recent trend in the UPSC optional, they ask uh, micro-topic specific questions. So these are the, the recently the current trend in UPC optional paper. So for example, in our uh, syllabus, if you take the our agri optional syllabus, okay. so this is our uh, syllabus. I have given the major uh, topic, okay. 
So in the paper one, 250 marks, paper two, 250 marks. I will uh, give the exam pattern. See, uh, in our mains, the weightage, 500 marks from optional paper, right? It is in our hands. There is a huge weightage in the mains, in the mains paper from optional, right? So on a common strategy, if you score a good mark in the essay, because GS, it is not in our hand. So whatever you prepare for the GS, it's purely dynamic. And the question is, they ask from anywhere, from any area. But we can control the, the subject. Okay? Only the, the essay and the optional paper we can control. We, it is in our hands. If you want to, okay, if you prepare well, if you try to score more than 300, it is possible. We can able to achieve that. But the GS, it's not predictable. It is highly unpredictable. Okay, Whether we are getting 110 marks or 120 marks in the GS out of 250, nobody can say. But in the optional paper, it is possible. Okay, So if you prepare, okay, if you do smart work and hard work, you can able to score more than 300, it is possible. Okay, Because okay, in, especially in agriculture, it is possible. Right. So there is a huge weightage in the in our optional mains. So if you score good marks okay, in the GS, SA and optional, definitely you get an interview call. And based on your SA mark and interview score, you will get top rank. Okay. So the optional score determine your interview call. If you okay, even if you score average marks in the GS, you can able okay, you can secure interview. You can okay, enter into interview. But the okay, the final rank determined by the you are a score in the GS and the SA and the interview. Sorry, uh, yeah, interview score. Okay. <clears throat> right. So this is the exam pattern. Uh, paper on 250 marks, paper to 250 marks. There are uh, eight questions. Okay, in the paper one. Choice is there. Actually, in the GS, no choice. Out of 2 marks, okay, no choice. All questions are compulsory in the GS. 25 questions are compulsory. But in our uh, uh, optional paper, choice is there. So in the paper 1 and uh, paper 2, there are 8 questions uh, total. You have to attempt 5 questions. So 5 into 50, 250 marks. This is the exam pattern. Right? But actually, again, there are some conditions okay, in the paper 1 paper 2. We cannot choose randomly any 5 questions. There are four questions in the uh, section A, section B. We can okay, divide in the paper one. Divide into two sections. Section A and section B. So four questions in the section A, four questions from section B. So totally eight questions in a single paper. So out of this uh, four questions from the section A, question number one and five are compulsory. So you have to attempt question number one and five. Okay. So out of five questions, Two questions are compulsory. Only for the, the remaining three questions, you can uh, take the choice. Okay. And again, one more compulsion, one more condition. We cannot choose all the three questions from a single section. Right. Either you have to, uh, apart from the compulsory question, you have to choose one more question. Right. So here, either we can follow the pattern, okay, 2 plus 3 pattern or 3 plus 2. This is the condition in the UPSC mains for all optional paper, not only agriculture. So for all the optional paper, this is the condition, right? So there are eight questions. We have to attempt the five questions, but out of okay, the five question, these are conditions. So one and five are compulsory. Apart from compulsory question, we have to choose at least one more question from the each section. Okay, right. So here in our UPSC syllabus, uh, no division of this uh, section A, section B. So approximately, we can, okay, we can assume that the first two four topics from the section A and the remaining topics for the section B. Similarly, in the paper 2 also. Whereas, okay, in some syllabus, okay, some area, they clearly divide the section B, section A area. But in agree, agree optional, the syllabus is okay, given in a combined manner. No division of section A, section B. Right? So in general, uh, for the section A, we can expect a question from the first two four topics. Okay? And uh, some topics are common between section A and section B. For example, nutrient management. So this question, okay, from this area, the question, okay, sometimes uh, they ask question in the section A as well as in the question, okay, section B. And the paper 2 also, plant physiology is a common topic. We can expect a okay, question in the section A as well as section B. 
one uh, common strategy to uh, score high marks in the paper too, since okay, the, the subject is a technical here, see uh, genetics and cell biology, plant breeding, uh, biotechnology, uh, seed technology, plant physiology, these are the technical area, pure science area, right? So, uh, if you choose, okay, the, I told you just in section A, section B, right? One uh, common strategy to score high mark, mostly in the section A, the questions are from these areas. So, you have to choose three questions from the section A, two questions from the section B. This one common strategy to score high marks in the paper two, right? Because these areas are a little bit vague, actually horticulture, uh, entomology, pathology, nutrition, food security are highly unpredictable. The question from the dynamic areas where the current affairs are also important okay, in this area, right? So moreover, the questions are mostly vague. So uh, if you choose more question from the section A, we can score high marks in the paper two, okay? Right. So coming to uh, the, uh, the recent pattern okay, in our UPSC syllabus. So uh, just I told you that, uh, so take the example, okay, for example, in the ecology and environment. So there is one topic called remote sensing. So in our syllabus, in the microtopic syllabus, they have given the word remote sensing, that's all. Advanced ecosystem analysis, remote sensing. There is a syllabus word given in the uh, UPC syllabus, agri option syllabus, right? So many of the students, if you, okay, if you prepare based on your, uh, the preparation based on the PYQ, if you go through the previous year question paper, so mostly one common question in the remote sensing area, applications of remote sensing in agriculture. This one a common question in the our uh, environmental science question. Very, very important question also. Discuss the various applications of remote sensing in agriculture. So we discussed applications like forestry, uh, soil science, and the crop estimation, crop yield estimation, right? Water resource management, weather monitoring, IR satellites. Okay, so we discussed the various applications of remote sensing in agriculture. That's okay, right? So when you refer the previous okay, pre pre question paper, this is the most common question. So students, uh, for this topic, they prepare only this area. But they fail to understand that there are different uh, dimensions of this topic. Always, okay, when you see the, the syllabus topic, we have to think about what are the various possible dimensions in the particular topic. That you will get again in the coaching. I will uh, okay, teach every topic, what are the possible dimensions in a particular topic, right? So if you take the remote sensing area, then we have to discuss about the so what are the various the components of remote sensing, the remote sensing, the tools, okay, and then types of remote sensing, and then applications. So the components are the, the tools, the types, and then applications. Again, under the applications of remote sensing, what is the recent pattern? I told you that micro topic specific questions. So what is the meaning of micro topic specific question? Earlier, the question was general. On a general, okay, 20 more question. Discuss the application of remote sensing in agriculture. But nowadays, okay, what they are asking, okay, under the various applications, there are 10 applications of remote sensing, approximately 10 applications of remote sensing. Now they are asking specifically, write about the application of remote sensing in the soil science, soil survey mapping. Discuss the application of remote sensing in the crop yield estimation. They ask very specifically. This is the nature of question in the agriculture okay, recently, right? So in that case, the problem is, if you prepare just a two-line answer for the, because okay, we prepare combinedly. For a 20 mark question for three pages, okay, actually in our uh, UPSC uh, optional paper, there are only two questions, two type of questions, 10 marks and 20 marks, okay? <clears throat> so 10 marks and 20 marks, only two type of questions. Uh, short question, 10 mark, short question, 20 mark, big question, that's all, okay? So for the 10 mark question, they are giving two pages. For the 20 mark question, they are giving three pages. Okay. So for the three page answer, we can uh, pre prepare the three page answer, okay, content for the application remote sensing in agriculture. But at the same time, suppose if you ask this question for 20 mark question, discuss the application of soil survey and uh, soil mapping. For a 20 mark question, you should ready to answer for three pages. Okay. So this is the recent challenge again, agree optional. Not only agree optional, any optional, any optional, they are asking the, the questions are split, even, okay, so this is one major challenge, micro-type questions, 
and one more thing questions are split in a single question they ask two three sub questions so that they split the mark okay this is both advantages and disadvantages when the question contains the two three sub questions when they split the mark then we can address each question separately we can provide proper structure to the answer it's easy for us at the same time we have to cover the entire syllabus we cannot skip any part of the syllabus because they try to cover the entire syllabus in the by splitting the questions okay <clears throat> right so in our uh, agri option syllabus uh, for a many syllabus okay, in the syllabus topic just they give one line in the syllabus area just okay, they give the one line so the okay with the, the one line uh, syllabus we have to uh, analyze what are the possible areas so take the example of okay, the weed science area weed science uh, the syllabus uh, words are just two lines so what are the okay, various uh, weed dissemination measures and uh, weed characteristics and then uh, physical chemical and uh, cultural methods of weed control that's all this is a syllabus word but under the chemical control of the weeds we have to focus uh, what are the possible areas chemical control of weed means herbicides we apply the herbicides to control the weeds so we have to discuss okay, all the what are the concerns related to the herbicides okay we need to analyze the dimension for every topic that i will clearly explain in the class okay so what are the areas we have to cover under each syllabus okay each syllabus topic so i will cover uh, comprehensively in the case so actually in our uh, the course duration is approximately uh, four and a half to five months okay we have evening class okay every day uh, six thirty to eight thirty two hours a class uh, monday to friday so every uh, weekend we have uh, sorry every friday we have the class test so mostly four days class monday to thursday and every friday we have uh, class test so two hours uh, class timing and approximately take uh, five months at, for the completion of the course four and after five months so if you start again okay, the month actually we are starting next uh, month november 7 okay so november 7 uh, we complete the course by end of uh, march by the end of march the course will be completed so in the five months time period i will complete the entire syllabus with the conceptual clarity okay so class test material everything provided in the, the class okay right <clears throat> So even if you are doing self preparation, uh, you should, okay, you must keep in mind. So the recent pattern in the EPSC, so don't prepare only based on the PYQ. So I will tell you clearly in the class how to approach each okay each part of the syllabus. Right? PYQ is important, but uh, in our okay, I will tell you the idea also. Okay, actually we have to prepare uh, uh, short notes. My material is very comprehensive, elaborate material. So after reading the material, I will also provide class notes also. In the class, I will explain the concepts. You can take. Uh, notes okay for the class the, the class notes so along with the class notes you have to refer the material after referring the material you have to prepare the short notes notes making is important in our upsc preparation okay so i will tell you idea how to make short notes and all i will tell you in the, during the class then after making the short notes uh, then you have to refer the pyq so pyq is only for understanding so how they are asking questions in the particular topic how to approach the particular okay so uh, to prioritize a particular topic we can see the the pyq so don't prepare fully based on the PYQ. That's not the correct strategy. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so this is our overall uh, syllabus. Okay, in our entire our. Uh, Our agri optional syllabus, uh, we discuss. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, crop production, the paper one. So entire the paper one deals with the crop production, agronomy area, uh, weed science, irrigation, soil science, crop production. So we discuss okay, all those areas under the, the first okay, paper one, agronomy area, and then uh, crop protection, entomology, pathology, control of pest and diseases in agriculture, and then crop improvement, uh, cell biology, genetics plant breeding and then a seed technology okay 
So these are the, the three major areas in our syllabus. Crop production, crop protection, crop improvement. The entire agriculture. Okay. Any doubts? Honest students, any doubts? So I will clarify your doubts. After that, we will see the one uh, demo lecture. Okay, one topic. We will discuss one topic. Doubts, sir. So, when compared to other uh, pure science option, it's easy only. So, when compared to physics, chemistry, biology, even uh, botany, so this is yeah, a simple subject. So, um, only thing is actually uh, we need to complete the syllabus, that's all. Okay. So, for the completion of syllabus, you must refer the proper study material. That okay, so I will uh, make that easy. Okay, I have I will provide the material so that cover the entire syllabus. So, all you have to do is you have to read the entire material by making the short notes. That's the only thing you have to do. Okay. Okay, any topic for discussion? So, timing for classes, uh, evening time, 6 30 to 8 30. Yes, the diagrams are important, okay, since it is a science based optional, ag agree optional is a science subject, so diagrams are important. And the diagrams such high, okay, high marks in our agree optional, especially in the paper 2 area and the cell biology, genetics for those areas, plant physiology, diagrams are very important. We can also use uh, in our agree optional, uh, we can also use color pens, Co color ink pens, okay, for the drawing diagrams. Uh, marks on the? 15 to 5. Ah, ma, ma. Ah, 10, 20. Our single question consists of actually uh, in our uh, section E and section B. Um, in the question number 1 and 5 are compulsory, right? So, question number 1 consists of 5 questions A, B, C, D. Okay. Each question is a 10 more question. Okay, so question number one, okay. each question carries 50 marks. So, each question carries 10 marks. So, totally in the question number one, five questions. This only for the compulsory question. For the choice based question, two 20 marks and one 10 mark. Okay. This is the pattern in our agree optional. This pattern will change for every optional. This pattern is not uniform. Okay, regarding our agree optional, this is the pattern. So, for the choice based question, actually compulsory questions are same. For every option, compulsory questions are the same type of question. But in the choice based question, sometimes okay, now the other option they ask 15 mark question or 5 mark question. It varies from one option to another option. Okay? For agree option, this is the pattern. So, for every question, from apart from compulsory question, for, okay, for other question, 220 marks, 110 mark. So, totally 50 marks. No, morning classes are not possible. Mm. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, actually, uh, in our class, I will explain the syllabus topics very clearly. I will uh, start from the basic only. I will uh, teach, okay, from the basic to advanced level. So, you can easily understand the, the classes. You can easily understand various like, the complex the concepts. So, do not worry about that.
so regarding uh, study materials uh, after the commencement of the class uh, for the offline students actually material is already available so after the commencement of the class for online students uh, we collect uh, address through google form so we dispatch the material uh, maximum 10 days after the commencement of the class And agri students that don't worry about this entomology and pathology and all, you can easily manage those areas. Okay. I have seen that many students are uh, hesitant to take agri optional because of okay, these two areas, the entomology and pathology. Okay. So don't worry about okay, this area. Uh, we have to study the crop waste pest disease management. But it's a very minor area in our okay, very meager subject in our uh, agri optional. So don't worry about that. We can focus on other areas and for uh, covering crop based disease pest management, I will give the idea, clear idea. So how to cover those areas? Actually two areas are very uh, challenging in our agri optional. One is we have to study the uh, crop wise uh, package of practices, POP, package of practices. So package of practices means uh, starting from sowing till harvest, uh, we have to uh, study the recommendation. So what is the uh, irrigation requirement, uh, weed management, okay, weed, weed practice, what is okay, the application of fertilizers, herbicides, everything, right? So this one uh, challenging area because it is purely factual. So we have to study the individual crops. Moreover, the problem is uh, there are more than 100 crops okay, in our agriculture. And the same syllabus in horticulture also. So we have to cover the fruits, vegetables, plantation crops, spices, right? So these are uh, the two uh, challenging area in the optional syllabus but I will give you the idea how to cover those areas. Moreover, I'm running a, a common channel, my own channel, right? You can uh, refer, okay, you can follow the channel regularly where you will get the uh, current affairs and uh, the, the extra topics, the POP and all. I will provide model answer for all these topics. You can refer the channel. I will later, okay, I will share the channel uh, ID. You can follow that. And regarding current affairs, don't worry about that. Since it's a science-based optional, current affairs questions are very rare. They won't ask you from current affairs. Only few areas we have to refer the current affairs and we can use current affairs as a value addition. So for uh, topics like uh, ecology environment, so in the under, okay, under this topic we study the syllabus like the climate change, environmental pollution, so they are the important topics under the environmental science. Okay. So while uh, studying the climate change area, we have to include the latest uh, recent uh, initiative taken by the government, the government programs and schemes regarding climate change okay, and the pollution. And another area, the extension area. We have to study the recent uh, uh, schemes and programs by the government, agri extension, and then farm management. So here we study about the agri marketing, agricultural price policy. So we need to link with the current affairs. So only for okay, only for few topics we need to okay, link with the current affairs. And here in the nutrition and food security, chapter two area. Okay. So for the remaining areas, we need to follow the current affairs. Just we can uh, focus okay what is given in the material. Okay, and uh, don't worry about the current affairs also. I will uh, regularly update with the, in our, my, my channel, okay, in my own channel, I will provide regular updates regarding the current affairs topic and where you can uh, relate to this topic. I will give the idea. So where, okay, how can we use this the current affairs topic in our syllabus? Okay. <clears throat> Any topic for a demo? Online students? Huh? Seed technology, okay. Right, oh, no. just a minute. Um, uh, regarding uh, answer copy evaluation for the online students, actually, um, I told you, you know, we create a separate channel for uh, every batch. In the Telegram channel, uh, I will uh, share the, before the, on the, okay, on the day of test, I will share the question come answer booklet. So the honest students, they have to write the, the test, they have to scan the answer copy, 
and i will ask them to share into my personal number actually this may uh, you can note down okay, my number if you have any further doubts you can ask me So this is my personal number, right? So here, um, so after every test, you have to scan the answer copy, and you have to send it to my personal number. I will check and I give feedback over the phone. This is for online students. For offline students, you can uh, write directly in our academy. You can uh, come to the academy. You can submit the paper here, and we can have one-on-one feedback after the correction. Physiology, entomology, pathology, okay, right. <laughs> Almost, uh, they suggested okay, all the topics, okay, right. One simple basic concept, okay? We start with one simple concept. Net zone area, grass cropped area. Okay. Right. So currently in India, the net zone area, it is approximately 140 million hectares. And the grass crop area is 190 million hectares. Okay. So based on that, we can calculate the cropping intensity index, or simply called the cropping intensity. So grass crop area divided by net zone area into 100. So this is the formula for the cropping intensity. Okay. Right. So we will get uh, approximately we will get 140 percentage. So this is the cropping industry in India at present. Okay. So what is the interpretation of these values? What is the meaning of each term? What is the meaning of net zone area? Yeah. Net zone area, the total area available for cultivation. The total arable land is called a net zone area. You know, okay, currently India is uh, having world's largest arable land. Actually, China is the major producer of major crops. They are the major producer of uh, food grains and uh, fruits and vegetables. But India is having the world's largest arable land. So out of our total uh, geographical area, that is uh, 328 million hectares. This is the total Jalf area of the country. That is, uh, okay, 32 lakh, 32 lakh 87,263 square kilometers. This is the total Jalf area of the country. That is 328 million hectares. Okay. So out of this 328 million hectares, 140 million hectares, almost 40 percentage of the 45 percentage. Almost 45% of the total job area of the country is under the cultivation, crop cultivation. That is area available for cultivation. That is called a net zone area. Then what is the meaning of grass crop area? On a simple logic, this grass crop area is always either equal to net zone area or more than net zone area. It won't be less than net zone area. Okay, so in this case, in our India's case, it is uh, more than the net zone area, extra 40 million hectares extra than the net zone area. And if you use okay, these two values, we can okay, we'll get the cropping industry index, that is 140 percentage. Okay, so what is the meaning of grass cropped area? So to understand this uh, concept, okay, grass cropped area, do you know uh, various uh, seasons in India?
in india we follow different seasons right there are three important seasons in india karif rabi and a summer so the summer season also called zaid season so these are the three seasons in india so karif season it follows a southwest monsoon june to september actually like uh, our uh, educational year agri year also starts with uh, june okay so agri year starts with uh, in the month of june so june to september this is the monsoon period in india southwest monsoon this is a major season second important season in india rabi season also called the winter season so here the winter season october to march okay october is a sowing time for the rabi crops october november sowing time and the summer or zaid season march to may summer season okay so these are the three important seasons in india right so in our cropping pattern for example in our kaveri delta region right so in a south india the delta regions are the agriculture active regions uh, in odisha mahanadi delta that's why i told you geography knowledge is important to understand agriculture okay so in odisha mahanadi delta in andhra krishna and godavari delta in tamil nadu kaveri delta so four important deltas in south india right so in the delta region one major cropping pattern okay one common uniform pattern is here is rice based pattern so rice is the most important crop in the delta regions so the major rice producing states in india tamil nadu andhra odisha chatisgarh and ipdi mele ponna enadhu west bengal gangetic delta okay right so the rice based cropping pattern is very important okay in the, in the entire east coast of india the most important cropping pattern so in a cow delta region one common cropping pattern rice 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 okay because in the cow delta region the farmers get assured source of irrigation they get irrigation from the cow river source canal irrigation so it is possible for the farmers to grow rice crop in all three seasons in the karif season they go for rice crop then after the harvest of the rice in the rabi season again they go for the rice crop and again in the summer season they go for the rice crop okay so all three seasons rice is possible this one of the common cropping pattern in the delta region kaveri delta krishna delta also same maybe in the third season sometimes uh, in the summer season when they face any moisture deficit they some okay, sometimes they live in fallow with their cultivation or they go for any pulses rice rice pulses okay it's common right just okay, uh, imagine one more uh, scenario in the central part of india okay central part of india like uh, in our uh, central part of karnataka here madhya pradesh maharashtra gujarat rajasthan so in those region what is the common cropping okay, in those region madhya pradesh major crop pulses okay madhya pradesh major crop is pulses uh, gujarat rajasthan rajasthan oil seeds millets millets and oil seeds are famous in rajasthan gujarat famous for the ground cultivation cotton cultivation maharashtra also famous for the cotton cultivation right so these are the major crops in central part of india so based on the availability of a water source we can divide the agriculture into two types irrigated agriculture and rain fed agriculture so mostly this region come under the irrigated agriculture because they get assured source of irrigation from any one of the source from the delta region kaveri krishna godavari mahanadi from any one of the river source the farmers are getting assured source of irrigation so they come under the irrigated agriculture okay so here mainly the source is canal irrigation actually there are three types of source in india three sources in india one is the canal irrigation from the rivers and from a tank irrigation from lakes and ponds tank irrigation one more important source well irrigation bore well open well and bore well okay so these are the three source of irrigation for the farmers in north india canal irrigation is very famous from the ganga and yamuna river those rivers are perennial rivers indus the entire region is called igp region indus river ganges and the brahmaputra so the entire region is called igp region so where the farmers are getting irrigation water from the canal source from the perennial rivers ganga canal yamuna canal indira gandhi canal these are the famous canal irrigation in north india right in uh, throughout india well irrigation is famous 
borewell and open well. But the borewell is very common. Nowadays, okay, farmers are using the borewell. Open, okay, the uh, tubules are the borewells. And in South India, tank irrigation is very famous. In uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, tank irrigation is the important source of irrigation. So here we have a large uh, uh, basins. Okay, the underlying, okay, underlying rocks are, they have the geologically stable region and they have the basin shaped structure. So the, the tank irrigation is very famous in South India. Okay, so tank is nothing but lakes and ponds, right? So if the farms are getting irrigation from any one of these source, either from the, the tank irrigation or from the well irrigation or from canal irrigation, then those land come under the irrid agriculture. And those farmers are called irrid farmers. Okay, and if the farmers depends on only rainfall, rainfall is the only source of irrigation and those areas come under the rain-fed agriculture. Those lands are fed by rainwater. So rain-fed agriculture or dryland, also called dryland agriculture. Okay, so based on the availability of a water source, we can divide the, the source, water, okay, the irrigation source, we can divide the agriculture into two types. Okay, so this cropping pattern, the all three seasons, Karif, Rabi and summer season, so it is possible in the South India, that is okay, in the Delta region, especially in the Delta region, where irrigation source is possible. And again, one more region, IGP region, Indo-Gangetic Plains, UP, Bihar, Punjab, Haryana, those states are famous, okay, they are an active region for agriculture. They are the grandest of India. They produce the bulk of rice and wheat grains in okay, North India, right? The entire our, uh, North Indian region, famous for rice and wheat cultivation, okay. So the reason for the multiple cropping seasons, multiple cropping the pattern, okay, in a single year is possible because of irrigation source, right. Whereas in the central part of India, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, central part of Kannada, western part of India, in those region, irrigation source is very, very poor. Irrigation coverage is very, very poor. So the farmers depends on only monsoon rainfall. And the monsoon is active in North India, the monsoon is the only active monsoon is southwest monsoon. So for those area, maximum only one crop is possible during the monsoon season. Okay. If enough irrigation sources are available, the farmers go for cropping all three seasons. If the rainfall is the only source, then they can cultivate the crop only during the rainy season. That is the four months period. Okay. This is the main difference between the irrigated farmers and dryland farmers. So dryland farmers, they can able to cultivate only one time in a single year. For irrigated farmers, they can cultivate at least minimum three, sorry, minimum two crops in a single year. If enough water is available in the summer season also, they can go for one more season. Okay. So based on that, grass cropped area. Next one area. Total land available for cultivation. That is the next one area. In a single year, how many times the land is put into cultivation? That is called a grass cropped area. How many times the land is utilized for crop cultivation? It is called a grass cropped area. So for the irrigated farmers, delta farmers, it is possible for them. Okay, Just assume that, Okay, for example, in a delta region, cow delta region, a farmer is having one hectare of land. Okay, so this one hectare of land is called a net zone area. He is carrying one hectare of land for cultivation, right? How many times the land is utilized in a single year? If he cultivate three crops in a single year, three times. Okay, so the grass cropped area is three hectare. This is the difference. Okay, so for the cow delta farmer, he can use the same land three times in a single year. Karif season, Rabi season, and again summer season. Rice, rice, rice cultivation. It is possible in the delta region. So, net zone area is 1 hectare. Grass crop area is 3 hectare. Whereas, okay, for the dryland farmer in the central part of India, he cultivates the land. Suppose, okay, if he has 1 hectare of land, he can cultivate the land only one time during a year. For the next two seasons, he leaves the land fallow without cultivation. Again, next year, when the monsoon arrives, they go for cultivation. Okay. So, net zone area is 1 hectare. Grass crop is also 1 hectare. Both are same. Okay. So, here they can achieve 
cropping intensity for the irrigated farmers in the delta region the cropping intensity Three hundred percentage. Grass cover area dolbe net zone area three hundred percentage. Whereas for the dryland farmers, the crop intensity is actually one by one into hundred, hundred percentage. Okay. So approximately, okay, currently in India, almost fifty fifty. So currently in India, fifty percent of the area come under the irrigated agriculture. Remaining forty eight percent of the area. So 50% of the area come under the irrigated agriculture. Remaining 40% of the area come under the dryland agriculture. Okay. So on average, if you calculate the crop industry for overall okay, throughout India, the average is 140 million hectares. That is the total land zone area, and the grass cover is 190 million hectares. So the average crop industry in India is 140 percentage. So, what is the meaning of this 140 percentage? What is the interpretation? That means we can cultivate from the net zone area 1.4 times. We are utilizing the land 1.4 times than the net zone area. That is the meaning of 140 percentage. Okay. So, the one hectare is utilized 1.4 times. That is the meaning of the crop intensity. Okay. So why we need to understand this concept? What is the importance of this crop intensity con concept? Okay. This is a basic concept of cropping system, first area, agronomy area. So what is the imp importance of okay, understanding this concept, cropping intensity index? It gives idea how the lands are efficiently utilized in India. Okay. So it gives the idea regarding land use efficiency. Land utilization efficiency. So, how efficiently the lands are utilized in India? And one of the limiting factors, the okay, major factor determining in this irrigation facility. If the farmers are getting proper irrigation facility, then we can improve the cropping intensity index. Okay. And why this concept is important? Because we can achieve the higher food production by improving the cropping intensity index. Okay, for example, if the percentage is uh, 200 percentage. What is the meaning? In the same year, we can able to cultivate two times. If the percentage is 300 percentage, in the same year we can able to cultivate three times. So land is same, but we can achieve higher percentage so that we can increase more production in a single year. Okay, instead of a dryland farmer, he cultivate only one times during a year. If he cultivate, a, okay, if he if he if he if he is getting 100 tons, okay, in a single year, for the for the same land in the irrigated condition, the farmers they can get 300 tons. Okay, we can increase the food production by improving the cropping intensity index. So this is very important for achieving the food security of the country. Okay, so here the main factor is irrigation facility, one of the limiting factor, availability of the water source. That is a limiting factor. Okay, so if we coverage, okay, if we increase more coverage under the irrigation facility, we can able to increase the cropping industry index. Okay, right. And this is what we achieved during the Green Revolution. How we suddenly increase the food production? It's not because of high-yielding varieties. Many of us okay, will say uh, we, okay, we doubled the production during the Green Revolution because of the introduction of high-yielding varieties. That's not the main reason. Actually, we doubled the, we tripled the crop production in a single year during the Green Revolution. We introduced a short duration varieties. Okay, so within a span of okay, 10 years after the Green Revolution, during 1980s and all, we almost doubled the production. When compared to the independence, at the time of independence, our uh, total food production was just 55 million tons. At the time of independence. So we improved food grains from other countries, from uh, USA. There, is a, okay, there was a scheme called the PL480. So under this scheme, 
we imported food grains from other country so we faced a severe shortage of food grains we faced a hunger malnutrition everything during the, at the time of independence right then after the green revolution 1964 65 green revolution year we introduced a major change in the green revolution we introduced the short duration varieties so yearly most of our long duration varieties traditional varieties are long duration varieties the maturation is 6 months maturation most of our traditional rice varieties are 6 months duration right so how can we okay how can we cultivate uh, three crops two crops in a single year that's not possible actually if they occupy 6 months time period again in a single year second crop is not possible right so we introduced here four months uh, short duration crops during the green revolution ir8 miracle it's called miracle rice ir8 from the philippines and uh, several wheat varieties from the mexico so most of them are short duration varieties so four months crop so that we can cultivate the crop we can harvest the crop before the october june to september the four months period for the kharif crop so it is easy for us to take up next crop in the month of october right otherwise the six months crop they occupy the june to december so next crop is not possible rabi crop is not possible okay so we achieved higher production during green revolution by introducing the short duration varieties okay so we increased the number of crops in a single year okay so this is the main reason for increase of food production in our uh, india after green revolution now we have achieved uh, almost we crossed uh, 300 million tons now we are a food surplus country and the transformation is uh, from a food deficit country to food self sufficiency now we achieved the condition of which are the status of food surplus country we export food grains to other countries any doubts so this was the class will be uh, so for every topic i will explain the okay, for the concepts area i will explain the concept and i will okay, because for any in our agri optional for uh, any topic we need to uh, finally we have to conclude the question so we have to say why this concept is important what is the purpose of okay that is the conclusion part after explaining okay suppose if you asking this uh, question write short notes on the cropping intensity index so we explain the, the concept what is the meaning of crop intensity index we we give the formula we can also explain the concept with one illustration like the dry land agriculture and rain for agriculture finally the conclusion is why this topic is important okay why we have to understand that the topic okay that's the conclusion part so we have to for every topic you have to understand the uh, the meaning okay <clears throat> any doubts all right students any doubts pretty brilliant okay ma so fast ah irunga solirunga na slow pannikalam onnu prachana illa okay ma during our class uh, based on your okay our uh, grasping uh, we can uh, decide the speed of the class okay so for online students you can directly you can visit the shankara academy website for a online enrollment for offline students you can make admission here in anandnagar okay <clears throat> so for any doubts further if you have any uh, further doubts you can contact me in this number in a telegram or whatsapp you can message me i will uh, so we can speak okay Okay. Mostly in Andhra, they'll they'll harvest by January. Okay. 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 Ok
and that space run the because okay this is a, this uh, uh, the short duration crops are uh, mostly used by the punjab farmers punjab and haryana because they have to take up the sowing of wheat in the month of november okay so for the rice wheat uh, rotation uh, they follow this pattern actually green to successful only in few areas only right in the igp region and the delta region okay in some areas the farmers are using long duration variety Ah, MSP pati. Ah, yena solona MSP pati. Yena ado ne or periy topic, okay? Ah, sa solonga. Ama, okay. Hmm. Ado the MSP regarding the MSP, we will discuss later again in the class detail in detail manner. Um, regarding the MSP, MSP is only a policy measure. The farmers are protesting um, for the legal guarantee for the MSP. So for any, okay, the problem is uh, when you announce a particular uh, scheme as a policy measure, it is a discretion of the government. It's not binding on the, the government, right? So when a particular uh, section of the people okay, affected by the policy measure, they cannot move to the court for the enforcement. So simply the court okay, rejected the, the petition by saying that it's a policy decision of the government. But when a particular policy, okay, if the government is giving statutory backup, for example, in our uh, food security, once it was like only a policy measure and the government in 2013 introduced the food security act national food security act 2013 okay so when they enacted a act for a particular policy now as okay as per the okay, as per this act it is compulsory for the government they have to cover 66% of the total population of the country. There is approximately 81 crore population every month under the PDA system. We provide a free food grains to the BPL families. This is a commitment under the act. Right? So, if the BPL families are unable to get food grains from the PDA shop, they can move to the court for the enforcement. Because it is mentioned in the act. The government gave, they gave the legal backup to the, the policy. Whereas for the MSP, regarding the MSP, no legal guarantee for the policy. It's a, every year the government announces a policy measure. Every season. For the carif, carif crops, before the carif season, they announce the MSP for various crops. For the rabi season, they announce the, 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 the MSP rate for various rabi crops before the rabi season. Okay. So the problem is, okay, uh, why the farmers are demanding the legal guarantee? Uh, because the MSP is only a guaranteed price, only an insurance price for the farmers. So, for the operation of the MSP, when the farmers go to the market, open market, when the market price falls below MSP, this is the condition for the operation of the MSP. Why the government announces MSP? It's a safeguard mechanism for the farmers, right? So, when the farmers going to the open market, when the market price falls below MSP, in this situation, the government will intervene to safeguard the farmers. They, uh, there is a the policy measure, there is a mechanism, they, uh, they can uh, procure the food grains directly from the farmers at the rate of MSP. Okay, right. So, we will understand later, okay, when uh, studying economics part, because market price determines the demand and supply. So, in the core economics. So, always market price determined by the demand and the supply. In the market, when the supply is more, the price will reduce. When the demand is more, the price will increase. So these are the two forces of the market. Okay, right. In case of okay, this policy, particularly the MSP policy, is only for in case of excess production. You know, agriculture okay, during in our uh, agriculture is uh, depends on so many factors. We cannot okay, exactly predict the the production. Right. In some years the production will be very high. In some years the production will be very low. Right. The, the fluctuation is very high okay, in the agri agriculture area. Right. So, in case of excess supply in the market, automatically price will drop. So, to safeguard the farmers from the excess price drop, the government announces the MSP. It's a guaranteed price. But it's only a policy measure. Right. Even okay, if the government is not procuring the, as per the policy, the farmers cannot move to the court for the enforcement. So, this is what happening in, okay, in the reality. Actually, this is a policy document. In the paper, it is given that uh, if the market price falls below MSP, the government can directly procure from the farmers the rate of MSP so that the farmers are getting assured price from the government. That is the policy document. But what, what's the reality? In the reality, what's happening? 
when the farmers go to the open market, they are getting at least uh, almost okay, 70 to 80% of the MSP. They are not even getting the 100% of MSP in the market. This is a real situation in the market. Okay. So the farmers are putting, protesting here yeah, uh, to give you a legal guarantee for the MSP policy so that by giving legal guarantee for the MSP policy, no trader in the wholesale market, in the open market, no trader should purchase the crops below MSP. They are asking this demand from the government, guarantee. Okay. So that when the farmers go to the open market, they should always get the MSP, either MSP or above MSP, not below MSP. Okay. This is the main demand from the farmer's side. But that's not possible actually. Because okay, just I told you that market should function based on the demand and supply, not based on any external force. Otherwise, okay, that will collapse the entire market structure. We will discuss later okay, in the economics area. You know, okay, it's a part of the syllabus, agree to price policy under the farm management area. Okay. <clears throat> so there are alternate solutions are there. MSP and FRP, yeah. Actually, um, there are uh, 24 crops covered under the MSP approximately. Uh, 23 are okay, in some books they are given 23 crops, uh, some books they are given 24 crops. FRP is the only for sugarcane. Fair and remunerative price, both are same. Like uh, MSP for various crops, the government announces the separate price for the sugarcane, FRP. Fair and remunerative price. As per the FRP, uh, this is a, it's like a, a contract agreement between the sugar mill owners and the sugarcane farmers. So here when the farmers go to the sugar mill for processing, the sugar mill owners, they have to pay the FRP to the sugarcane farmers. Okay. So this is the announcement of okay, the FRP every year, they, before the, okay, the sugarcane season, they announce the FRP. Fair and multi price. And here the 24 crops important almost all the important crops called under the MSP. The major pulses, oil seeds and the cereals. Hardy crops they, okay, they won't cover under the MSP. The high value crops not, okay, they are not part of the MSP. Only agri crops. Okay, clear? Any doubts? All right, students, any doubts? You can send your doubts to co-host. Thank you. Scientific name, political name, chemical commission, and other Scientific names are the weed science topic. The weeds name is the weed name. The weed name is the weed forest species name. The weed name is the entomology pathology. The weed name is the weed name. That's why we're going to talk about it.